So these videos are just meant to get you some more practice in different aspects of significance testing. Um, it's all about proportion, so we don't have to worry about sample means. So just accepting or rejecting, well, we never accept HO. We always say we reject HO or not. So I got a little bit of a typo there that I really don't like this morning. So um, they want it to write. So they say in here, so it's the, this disorder has a success rate of this treatment has a success rate of 65%. So HO would be P equals 0.65, meaning that the, the, new, uh, the new alternative treatment doesn't work any better than the old treatment. And HA or H1 is that it works better. I'm going to assume that this is a right tail test. Okay, because we want to show that it works better than that. And the, the, and the way they worded that lets me know it's going to be right-tailed. So let's see. So they're telling us we've got a 5% level of significance. So that tells me, because I've got a right-tailed test, as long as this area to the right is smaller than 0.05, I can reject HO. Um, they're telling me for the first part it has an area of 10%. So that's 10%. That's not small enough. We cannot reject HO in, in situation A. So it doesn't look like the, the new treatment works any, is any more effective than the old treatment. Uh, the next one, same level of significance, 0.05, but we've got a, point, a p value of 0.01, which places this test result this far from the mean. I guess I didn't really say that for the first part which means that area, the probability of that happening is less than, or is around 1%, which is less than 5%. So in this case, we can reject HO. It looks like the new treatment does work better, has a better success rate than the old treatment. Um, if the level of significance is 0.01 and the p-value is 0.99, a couple of things could be happening here. It could be a p-value of 0 0.99, but that's not very likely. And that's usually going to be a, from a two-tailed test. Typically, you won't ever get a p-value bigger than 0.5. Um, that can happen, though, with a two-tailed test because you get the double the area and both tails to add up. to, And that could possibly be bigger than 0.5. Um, usually, though, when I see a p-value of 0.9, that tells me I probably selected if I'm using software I probably went the wrong way with my HA my H1 I probably use a less than instead of a greater than okay now a level of significance for part D we've got a pretty small level of significance but we also have a pretty small p-value so again that because it's such a small p-value it's unlikely to get a, that result by chance it's an unusual event so we're going to reject HO. Looks like the treatment does work better than the old. New treatment does work better than the old treatment. So for this next next um, example, I don't know if there's a lot to talk about. They didn't want us to write this in words, but the null hypothesis would show it would be that no, she she isn't pregnant. I mean, it's kind of like uh, well, um, you know, it's not there's not enough evidence to say that that she's uh, she, she she is pregnant. Could be that there's not enough hormone. She hasn't been pregnant long enough so that the hormone's present. It's been a while since I've been, <laughs> since my, my family's used pregnancy test kits, so I'm able to become more sensitive, but that's what, um, that's what that null hypothesis means. So the alternative hypothesis was, yep, it looks like she, looks like she is pregnant. There's enough hormone present to, to get a positive result. Uh, and then the conclusion is there's not enough evidence, so that's telling me just that, that on um, the test kit, the pregnancy test test, oh, that's a nice typo, Dan, kit is not showing that she's pregnant. And now the conclusion, so if, uh, if I'm going to reject the null hypothesis, it looks like she is. So I hope that's pretty straightforward. So in this situation... We're trying to say that uh, HO, that there's not enough evidence to show there's a relationship. And with a level of significance of 5% and a p-value of 33, you know, let's see, I don't know if this would be right-tailed, left-tailed, more likely, may, maybe right-tailed, depends on how they set it up. But regardless of that, the level of significance says 0.05. If your probability of that happening is less than 0.05 or 5%, 
you can reject HO, and we're getting a p-value of 0.33, which means that error is a lot more than 0.05, so um, it doesn't support the claim that there's a relationship between smokers uh, being more likely to get the disease than non-smokers. And with a p-value of 0.03, well, that's that means, let's see if I can delete some of this. I don't know. I'm just going to delete all of it. If I were to do a three percent level, a three percent p-value, here's my cutoff. Here's my five percent cutoff, and we're getting a p-value that's less than that. So the chance of a, getting a sample of however many smokers that get the disease that far away from the middle is only three percent, and that's less than five percent. So we can reject HO. That supports the claim that there that smokers are more likely to get the disease than non-smokers. Now, something Dr. Stevens does really well with this is he has people write down what's the claim. Uh, and I didn't ask you that here. I had created this before I, I had used his textbook. And I'm just realizing now that I should have had it out of that here. So it says about 10% of the human population is left-handed. S- suppose that the researcher speculates that artists, I'm going to highlight that. Suppose the researcher speculates that artists are more likely to be left-handed than other people in the general population. So that's the claim. He thinks there's going to be more than 10% of the people will be of uh, artists will be left-handed. So that's the claim. Now to support that, we're going to say, well, HO would be well. No, the 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 researcher is not correct. Um, the proportion of artists that are left-handed isn't any more likely than the rest of the population, and then H1 will be his claim. Because he's saying that it's greater than 0.1. So here's the claim. It's important to keep in mind. So we've got those two things. Let's see. What proportion of the sample artists is left-handed? What symbol? What? Uh, oh, I see. we got 150 artists, and 18 of them were left-handed. So that is P-hat. 18 out of 150 is the fraction form, and that as a decimal is, let's see here, 18 divided by 150, I'm getting 0.12. So I've had some people tell me (laughs) wrongly that, okay, I've got this sample that's 12%, that's more than 10%. Hey, looks like the researcher's claim is supported. Unfortunately, that's... um, because of sampling variation, who knows if that's a rare event. And that's kind of what we're going to do with this. And this next part is finding the p-value. And you can do this with a, significant, with a testing applet. And I encourage you to do that. Um, I'm just going to calculate a z-score right now. And then use a, p, and then use a table. Um, so my sample result was 0.12. My HO value is 0.1. And then I get to get the standard deviation for this mix, uh, mess. And that you do by taking the sample proportion, not the sample proportion, the population proportion, at least the hypothesized population proportion. And then you do 1 minus that, and you put that over this sample size, which is, what, 150? So I'm going to get um, 0.02. Over, and let's see, if I do the square root of 0.1 times 0.9 divided by 150, that gave me a standard deviation of 0.024, which is going to give me a, I'm letting the calculator carry a few more decimals than that. Um, that gives me a, uh, I didn't divide that right. Let's see, 0.02 divided by 0.024. Uh, okay, I'm really messing up here. 0.02 <laughs> divided by 0.024. Here we go. Now that's what I knew it should be. I knew it should be less than 1. So 0.83. Now if you go to that table... If you go to that table on the bottom of page 288, here's the little part of the normal curve table. 
I want to look at the critical value of, uh, I guess I should be using a p-value for this, aren't I? But let's go this way, route since I'm there. Um, the critical value for a, do they tell me the critical level of significance? They don't. So I guess what we'll do is we'll just go with a 5% level of significance. So 5% level of significance, and this is a right tail test. So if my if my Z score, if my test statistic is greater than 1.645, I can reject HO. It's not, so I'm not going to reject HO. I'm kind of glad I did this because um, we're going to get a large p-value is what what you're going to see out of this. So we we know we can't reject HO. So let me go get another picture from the from the normal curve table. So looking at that normal curve table. I'm going to go down to the 0.8 column, row, I mean. I'm going to go over to 0.03 row, or column, I got this backwards, and I'm seeing 0.7967. Now that is the area to the left, and our p-value is going to be our area to the right. We want that area, so to get that area, I have to do 1 minus that number from the table. Let's see, what did I just say it was? Let's circle it so I can see it. So 1 minus 0.7967, 7967, not 76, 0.7967. So what's 1 minus 0.7967? That's giving me a p-value of 0.2033. So I decided to go out to that Rossman chance applet and, and run an example of that just so you can see the compare. Also to check my work. So I selected one proportion. I put in N is 150, my counts 18, and clicked calculate, and that gave me my P hat value, which we knew all that. And then I checked tested significance. Um, this textbook that they use uses pi for P for a population proportion. I mean, that doesn't matter. But I did say, notice how I put in my HO and H1. Click Calculate. It gave me the Z-score. It gave me the P-value. And that that's pretty darn close to what I got on the table. So there's the area. So that's what that means. That's how you calculate that. So then I'm back here to answer this last question. Was the researcher correct? Well, with a P-value that large, we can't reject HO. Or if we look think about that... that uh, that critical value of Z, we couldn't reject HO, so no, the researcher wasn't correct. The data doesn't support the claim that more than 10% of artists are left-handed. Um, I encourage you to go take a look at that flow chart that, um, that I have up in the discussion forum. It'll help you and answer these kind of questions.